I'll take around five minutes just to give you um, some uh, headlines on the University of London and the international programs. Um, you may have seen or already picked up um, at the reception desk a MOOC report which we published um, uh, toward the end of last year, which was based on our first four MOOCs that we delivered from June to August. They give you a lot of the, the raw data and some of the background and the experiences that we had. Because I'm talking of next steps, I'll only just uh, breeze over the kind of headlines of that. We had over 200,000 um, students enrolled, around 93,000 became active at the start of each MOOC, um, and around 9% of those completed with a statement uh, of achievement. Um, those of you who are familiar with Coursera, and it was mentioned this morning, the signature track um, that effectively provides um, an authenticated um, assessment for the student. It validates effectively the identity of the student and by keystrokes provides a biometric reading of each student so that when they um, submit an assessment, there's over a 90% uh, confidence level in terms of um, that being the person who has submitted it. And for that, um, on Coursera, the average price is around $49. Most of the other platforms have got something similar, um, but obviously because we've been on the Coursera um, platform, that's what we used. Just to give you an idea, it was early days because it had only recently been launched last year. We had around 1.5% of the active students who actually signed up for that. So it was a relatively small number but it does provide a certain element of income which comes back into the partner universities. I have to say only 15% of that uh, is, is a top line share, uh, comes back to the university, and then there's a further share once the administration costs of doing the various identity checks and so on has been taken off. That just gives you an idea of some of the, uh, the business modeling in terms of signature track. Um, so, next steps, well, from Martin's uh, key this morning, we've landed on the moon, if we're Neil Armstrong, in terms of MOOCs. Um, I, he forgot to mention that by taking the armchairs out, Neil Armstrong also brought a putter, as I remember, as a, as a very small lad, I have to say, uh, when I was watching on television. So we're going to play golf next, is uh, I guess the next stage, if we take that metaphor. Um, for us at the University of London, we, we, we had um, significant satisfaction rates. We felt the quality was high with the four MOOCs that we delivered. Three of those were based on bachelor degree level courses that we run as international programs, as full fee paying programs. Um, and just for those of you not so familiar with international programs, some of our undergraduate degrees um, are costed at just below £5,000 for the full degree if a student studies by independent learning. So it's a very competitive price in terms of uh, certainly UK uh, markets and on-campus programs elsewhere. So three of them were, were at undergraduate level from law, from um, history, a BA history that we run with Royal Holloway, and also um, the, uh, the computing, creative computing program, which was about uh, mobile applications. All those three had parent degree programs in our international program suite. Um, and we also had um, a malicious software, which is based on an MSC information security. So those were the four MOOCs. Um, they cost roughly £80,000 to develop. That doesn't include all of the, um, uh, the lecture instruct instructor time. So it's at the lower end of, um, of the full cost. Therefore, approximately £20,000 each, just to give you some metrics to, to complement this morning's session. Um, out of those MOOCs, um, our early registrations shortly after um, the MOOCs were completed, we have mapped that there are around 150 applications, new students coming in to our programmes who had also done one of our MOOCs. Now, we don't know cause and effect there. We're doing some survey work and it's still early days on it, um, but that's around about 95% applying for undergraduate programs, which I think was the question this morning, and around 5% of those are postgraduate programs. So it kind of follows similarly the, uh, the breakdown that there were more undergraduate programs in, in the four MOOCs that we launched. Um, and again, just for those accountants in the room, um, why are you in the room, first of all? <laughs> I'm an accountant myself, so I'll, I'll, I'll include myself in that. Um, we have approximately about a £1,000 revenue per student head per year on average that we get. So if you can imagine those conversions 
uh, mean that the business model for us works very well if those are genuine conversions that would not have signed up for the MOOC, have signed up for the full programs having done the MOOC. So for us, it's, it's, it's an important element of tasting uh, the, the range of over 100 programs that we have that we deliver over 180 countries worldwide. Future developments, so next steps for us. Um, we have six MOOCs that we are launching, new MOOCs that we're launching this year. Um, and we're also um, doing other iterations of the four MOOCs that we completed in 2013. Um, the first new one went, uh, went live in terms of opening for enrollment uh, at the weekend. And to date, we've had 1,000 students per day sign up for that MOOC. And that's on careers and employability. So some of the sessions this morning referred to the importance, perhaps, of employability for students who are doing the MOOCs and uh, that they're wanting to ready themselves for work. So our careers group that's based here in the University of London, uh, who've got a, a, a wide range of experience across all the uh, federal lead colleges of the University of London, um, they're putting their expertise in terms of um, prompting students of how to prepare themselves for the world of work, um, completing CVs, preparing for interviews, how to express their learning outcomes in terms of applying for, for work. So that will go live in May of this year on the Coursera um, platform. Areas I think that we've found um, could be improved in the future, uh, and partly uh, it's early days, partly it's, it's living and learning. Uh, the learner analytics that was talked about this morning, and I think there's been a lot in the press about big data and so forth, I think there's still quite a bit of work needed there in terms of the Coursera platform. You get some very big numbers of who's um, accessed a video, who's accessed um, a chat room, who's posted and so forth. But um, when we were talking about um, trying to get a tutor to interpret that, it, of course, it needs to be on a personal level. So I think the, the, the points made this morning about the Khan Academy approach and getting some of that personalized so it can be shared with tutors, so it can be um, obviously used as a self-assessment tool for students, I think is a really important development that's needed. Um, second area is flipped classroom. We work with 70, I think, I think the school runs in by the sound of that blip. It is in, right, okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm working on borrowed time. And we have over 70 affiliate and registered centers worldwide, and I think there's potential for us to use some of the content on the MOOCs on our full fee paying international programs, working in partnership with a lot of those centers. So Tim's team work with the global network of those centers, and I think that gives us some some room for, for development in the future. And the third one really is, is the signature track in CPD. You'll hear from um, Daphne shortly about the sequencing and specialization routes that have been announced um, in the last couple of weeks for Coursera. I think that again is, a, is an area of interest to see whether that works for CPD market and employability. And without more ado, I shall pass over to my colleague Jeff, who will talk, talk through Edinburgh's experience. <laughs> 